If you're from outside of Japan, then your first introduction to Marth was probably Super Smash Bros. Melee. Marth as a character and Fire Emblem as a series owe much of their success to Melee. Well, to Melee and to making several design changes and adding in dating simulators to appeal to the weeaboos and otakus, but back when Fire Emblem was all dragons and no waifus, it wasn't that popular. And it wasn't international. Marf's original games were only released in Japanese and wouldn't get localized in English until the DS remake. Marth was pretty unique in Melee for that reason. He wasn't famous like Mario, Pikachu, Samus, or even Star Fox and Captain Falcon. People didn't even know if he was the blue-haired sword guy or the blue-haired sword girl. According to one interview, Sakurai had to fight to keep Marth in the games at all because of how unknown he was in the wider world. However, Sakurai thought the character was too fun to leave out. Looking back, Sakurai was 100% right. Marth would become immensely popular casually and competitively, not just in Melee, but most Smash titles. To the point that a whole archetype of character would form out of his character, the Sorty. Fast forward to Smash's fifth title, and now there are Sorties and Marth clones as far as the eye can see. It wasn't just because Marth had a sword either. Link had one as well, but Marth's entire kit was built around that sword in a way that Link's just wasn't. Hey guys, Bonk here, and Pro Guides is your go-to resource for character guides, professional coaching, and courses from the best players out there. Be sure to check it out. Marth was a character made around two simple things, movement and disjoints. No true range, no true projectiles, just zoning via spacing and the speed to convert after swatting an opponent away. This works incredibly well in Smash, because at its core, Smash is a game about movement and spacing. The platform parentage of Smash makes sure of that. When the competitive scene for Melee first emerged, Marf's strengths weren't yet apparent. In no small part because the power of movement wasn't yet developed. All of that would change with the rise of Ken the King of Smash. Ken would swiftly become Melee's first dominant force. He'd do so not just by pioneering the Marth game, but the movement game. Ken was one of the first players to really exploit dash dancing, which was especially great with Marth given the tipper mechanic. In case you somehow missed it, Marth's sword does more damage and knockback at the tip. Those sweet spot hits are called tippers. Ken understood that he could dash dance, pressure the opponent into overcommitting, then dash back and hit a tipper. Or, if they were low damage, he could dash in and grab using Marf's insane grab range. Marf's throws are also some of the best in the game, and Ken was one of the first to figure that out. He's widely credited with inventing chain grabbing all the way back in a money match against a prominent old school Falco, the Sultan of Samitude. He made it international too. The Japanese melee scene didn't know about it until they met Ken and saw him chain grab their prominent Falco, Bomb Soldier. The chain grab actually changed their perception of Marth. The Japanese had never fought a, a Marth like Ken's, then you had a chain grab like Ken. As Melee got bigger, so did Ken's achievements. He went from winning small nationals and west coast regionals to winning circuits coordinated by Major League Gaming, or MLG, who were one of the biggest names in esports at the time. His Marth was so sharp that he pushed his main rival at the time, Azin, to main Marth as well. So, in the early days of Melee, the best two players in the US, and maybe the world, were Marth mains. Even with such great results, Marth wasn't seen as the best character in Melee. That honor went to Sheik earlier on, and then Fox and Falco. While good, Marth didn't have the insane speed of the Spaceys and Sheik. Ken himself would often argue that Marth wasn't as strong as the results made him look. Nor did he have quite as big a player base as the already iconic Spaceys. Still, Marth was, at minimum, one of the best characters in the game, and he'd stay up there for most of the game's lifespan. Marth's punish game was insanely potent even early on. The now-famous Ken combo shows as much. From about 2003 to 2006, Ken would beat just about everyone there was to beat and mostly using Marth. In the rare cases he got outplaced, it was almost always by Azin, Isaiah, or Captain Jack. Since Isaiah played Falcon and Captain Jack played Sheik, so it seemed Marth struggled with these matchups especially. It's also worth noting that Ken also pioneered the character in doubles. Ken and Isaiah were an almost undefeated doubles team during their height. Towards the second half of 2006, Ken's star began to fade. 
he was still getting top eight, just not top one. However, Morph Star hadn't faded at all. In that short window, Azin got two large wins in place of Ken, and the new Morph main rose up, one who would inherit the throne from Ken, Mewtwo King. In 2007 and 2008, Mewtwo King was arguably the best player in the world. Mewtwo King did a lot not just for the Marth meta, but for Melee as a whole. Mewtwo King would uncover and record much of the game's frame data with zero tool assistance. That level of research applied to his Marth game, where he showcased new, fully optimized punishes that could rob a Spacey of their stock in just a few blows. He also optimized the character's edgeguarding flowcharts to a new degree. For as optimal as M2K was in 2007, the year wouldn't fully be his. Ken wasn't ready to hand over the crown just yet. He'd make EVO 2007 his last great moment. Ken came out with one of his best showings ever, beating many of the rising stars that had outplaced him and getting first place. Combine Ken's EVO run and Mewtwo King's incredibly strong play in 2008, and many players thought Marth was a top two character in the game. However, that didn't last long. Mewtwo King would eventually split focus with Brawl and increasingly play Sheik, leading Marth to dip lower in tier lists. At about this time, players became more attuned to Marth's weaknesses, the biggest being Marthritis. When Marth got an opponent above a certain damage point, none of his kill confirms would work. He needed a raw tipper or edge guard to kill. A savvy opponent could not only deny the kill, but catch Marth overextending. In late 2012, PPMD would pick up Marth and make further adjustments to the character. More balanced and adaptive, PPMD used Marth to adapt to his opponents, switching between Falco and Marth based off of stage, matchup, and opponent. Marth would play a huge role in PPMD's breakout successes at Apex 2013 and 2015. Around 2014, Marth gained a reputation as being even or slightly losing to lots of popular characters, in particular, Captain Falcon. Marth had to work a lot harder for the kill than Falcon did, and Falcon had harder punishes on Marth. The biggest person to change the Falcon matchup might not have been PPMD, but Pew Pew Yu. A long-time top solo Marth, Pew Pew Yu regularly got bodied by Falcons, until he changed his style up a lot to figure out the matchup. Pew Pew Yu found that less jumping, more grabbing, and more up-close pressure would stifle Falcon's momentum and make the matchup more even. Pew Pew Yu would also take the doubles mantle from Ken. He and S-Fat might be the best doubles team ever, but the best solo main Marth in modern melee wouldn't be Pew Pew Yu. It'd be Zane. Zane gradually rose up the ranks, learning from previous great Marth mains like Rishi, Pew Pew Yu, and of course PPMD, Mewtwo King, and Ken. Zane's Marth would take the spacey domination to a new level, and even get longtime Fox solo mains to look at secondaries. Now at the summit, like every Fox main is like, yeah, I'm, go I'm going Sheik, I'm going Sheik. I know Cody, Fiction, like it, everyone's realizing like, yeah, it's not. It's not sustainable. Zane would also shore up Marth's weaker matchups, particularly Sheik, Falcon, and Puff. Zane's got the patience to work through Marthritis, as well as the raw technical skill to optimize Marth's punish game. That patience and skill has made him arguably the best player in Melee ever since his big win at Genesis 7. It's also helped bring Marth back into contention as a top 2 level character. Marth's biggest issue is still the matchup chart. Fox wins most relevant matchups. Marth goes even. Marth just can't break out of disadvantage the way Spacey's do with Shine, so he takes as much punishment as he dishes out. And it comes down to the Marth main to use the character's massive disjoints, great frame data, and extensive tech to keep in neutral or advantage. So, most still see Fox as slightly better. Some place Puff and Falco as higher too, but Marth is still a definitive character in Smash. As Fox creates the Spacey and Puff creates the Floaty, so does Marth create the Sortie. As it turns out, the Sortie would be a powerful archetype in every Smash game. In Brawl, Marth would be a high to top tier character despite shifting into a radically different engine. Marth would lose the combos and insane punish game that made him top tier. He didn't have the damage, setups, or hard punish potential of Meta Knight, the Ice Climbers, Diddy Kong, or Olimar. 
and while he had roughly the same recovery as in Melee, it was arguably worse in comparison to the rest of the cast in Brawl. Meta Knight could edgeguard Marth particularly well, and Meta Knight was the most meta-relevant character around. However, Marth was still fast, agile, and capable in neutral advantage and disadvantage. Marth also had a lot of quick moves, in particular forward air. Marth's fair was fast enough to be a safe, spammable option to control space or even swat an opponent away. His up special was insanely fast as well, making it a great out of shield option, although it was very punishable on whiff. Most of Marth's hitboxes got toned down, giving him less range but his grab remained about as busted. On top of a good grab range, he had very solid chain throws, some pretty good kill throw options for key matchups, and he could grab release and dunk Meta Knight into the blast zone, something that made the most important matchup in the game doable. Not even, but doable. Marf's damage, while not top tier, was still solid as well. His combos weren't too much to write home about, but he still did decent damage with juggles and edge guards. Overall, he fit pretty well in the new engine. He had a good grab game, good out of shield option, and a nice dash attack cancelled up smash, or Dacus. Marth stayed a fairly popular pick and brawl and had about the meta relevance you'd expect in a game so centralized around Meta Knight. His best players were Mike Hayes from the US, Mika Neko from Japan, and Mr. R and Leon from Europe. Mika Neko and Leon came to the character a bit later, leaving Mr. R and Mike Hayes to push the early meta. Mike Hayes was known for being pretty quick to learn and showcase the grab release confirms on Meta Knight, and for innovating on the Ice Climbers matchup as well. But in all seriousness, he was probably the best Marth in the world in very early Brawl. He placed third at EVO 2009 and showcased a lot of Marth knowledge. He also showed how much Marth could thrive off of some of the early meta Brawl stages. Mr. R and Leon were both known for a more aggressive and flashy style. They were both strong players in Europe who took a while to get the resources to travel. Japan's main Marth, Mikaneko, was a latecomer to Brawl, but he may have been the best Marth overall. He won a pretty stacked Japanese tournament, beating Japan's then best player, Otori. And he became truly internationally known at Apex 2013, where he scored some big upsets and placed fifth overall. He used Down Smash better than perhaps any other Marth. Since the move shot straight upward, it was an oddly effective kill option. It wasn't bad in neutral either because it had absurd speed and range. In 2014, all of Brawl's big Marth mains made the ranking, and they all had strong in-region wins, notable upsets, and some great showings at international majors. The character remains a debated high tier. Some put him just under the top tiers, while others think he might not even be top 10. He'd fallen from melee, but he was in a fine spot in Brawl. It was harder to say the same for the blue-haired swordsman at the start of Smash 4. First things first, in Smash 4, Marth got split into two characters, and they're similar enough that we should talk about them in tandem. Smash 4 introduced Lucina to the game. Casual fans know her as Girl Marth, but true Fire Emblem loreheads know her as Marth's great, 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 great hours later. granddaughter. Mechanically, Lucina is essentially Marth, but with no tipper hitbox. The damage in knockback is mostly even across the blade. This one simple change is somehow simultaneously very important and not that big a deal. On the one hand, it will be enough to make one character more played and higher ranked than the other. On the other, the two lords are still close enough that they get lumped together into one unit, Marcina, and skills from one easily transfer over to another. Ideally, picking between one or the other should come down to whether the player prefers the precision of the tipper or the consistency of a normal sword. In actuality, the engine of the game rewards one design more than the other. In Smash 4, the OG Hero King Marth would be the winner. In the two-stock system, the tipper was more valuable because it had more surprise kill power. 
With just two stocks, early kills were massive momentum swings, and Rage was so overtuned that Marfs could sometimes stroll up, forward smash, and flat out rob the opponent. In the early meta, when the game and matchups were less known, that was especially an advantage. However, by the end of Smash 4's heyday, it was an open argument if Lucina and Marth were different enough in Smash 4 to merit different spots on the tier list. In the early days, neither were high on the list. In terms of good changes, Nintendo made Marth's disjoints a bit bigger, they made his Shield Breaker special more useful than it was in Brawler Melee, they made his Tipper F Smash a brutally strong move, and maybe best of all, he wasn't quite as easy to edgeguard as in Brawl. Unfortunately, those few buffs didn't make up for the fact that Smash 4 removed most of his old strengths. Smash 4 Marth had nowhere near the frame data or punish power of Melee Marth. His aerials now had more end lag than ever. Not only did that hurt his combo potential, but it made him struggle to control neutral. In advantage, Smash 4 Marth struggled to get kills because he lacked confirms, and he couldn't make up for that with edge guarding anymore. Since Smash 4 removed chain grabbing and grab release shenanigans, Marth's grab game was initially lackluster too. At the beginning of Smash 4, Marth and Lucina were genuine low tiers. Their kits felt semi-functional and underwhelming, but much like in his games, this was just early game Marth, before he got his level ups, his class promotion, and his legendary equipment. Nintendo would give all of that to Marth and Lucina gradually, through patches. The first notable patch came in April of 2015, lowering the end lag of a few moves, making side special more consistent, and adding some more damage to Lucina. Bigger buffs would come with later patches, but the early patch showed Nintendo's plan for the character. Make aerials less laggy, make hitboxes bigger, make sweet spots more consistent, and up the damage and knockback across the board. Even the early buffs made a pretty big difference. Mr. E, the most notable Marth main, would not only get results, he'd get ranked on the PGR. Mr. E was of the early Marth evangelists who hung with the character before top players did. They'd advance the Marcina meta to a point where it was clear the buffs were meaningful, and from there, a handful of top players would pick up Marth or Lucina as a co-main or secondary, the most notable being the man himself, MK Leo. Gradually, the buffs and the player base would bring Marth in line with his normal status in Smash. Strong in advantage given his solid combos, tech chases, juggles, and edge guards. Mediocre in disadvantage given his tall hurtbox, lack of landing tools, and lack of panic buttons. And very good in neutral so long as the player could space and time his moves to perfection. Marth was also one of the few characters who arguably fell into a better meta as the game moved on. In the early days, Diddy Kong and Sheik reigned supreme. Marcina, especially pre-buffs, couldn't handle either matchup well. However, Mario, Bayonetta, Cloud, and Corrin were all easier matchups. Most were even or slightly losing for the sorties, but a slightly losing matchup against Bayo alone was overall a positive in Smash 4. Marcina could outrange Mario and punish Bayo pretty well, and they could effectively edgeguard Cloud. In the late meta, the Elysian nobility would have some clear threats. Like the Koopa King, Bowser could kill them pretty easily by abusing their inability to land. And he could avoid getting killed, buying more time to land a grab that killed at 80. All the same, Marcina would gradually climb up and up the tier list due to buffs and results. Mr. E would consistently place well at national events and score big upset wins. Mr. E's EVO 2018 run was particularly legendary, getting him 5th at one of Smash 4's last Super Majors. And of course, MKLeo would tear up the competition as Marth, doing so well that some argued he carried the character. So, like in Brawl, Marth was never in contention for best in the game, but he was in the low top tier or upper high tier area for lots of players. Only this time, Sortie Mains had the option of going Lucina as well. Mr. E and others argued that Lucina's different hitboxes made her better in some matchups. Mr. E would eventually only main Lucina. Other top professionals would also make Lucina a go-to secondary over Marth, which makes sense given they wouldn't have to learn tipper spacings. 
but MKLeo would remain true to Marth, and would regularly make the Hero King's tippers look so incredibly potent in Smash 4's engine. More than any other Marcina main, Leo showed just how well Marth could use perfect pivots and micro-movement to space and punish. He'd also master disadvantage better than any other Marth, using some insane recovery mix-ups and fast, late-hit aerials for potent counter-hitting. MK Leo's Marth was arguably one of the most beautiful things in Smash 4, and Marth himself really was something of a classic hero. He was the king from ancient Smash history who could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the dominant new DLC characters. Oh, how the Falchions would turn in Ultimate. In Ultimate, Marth is completely overshadowed by Lucina, which, if you think about it, is fitting to the Fire Emblem franchise. In the world of Fire Emblem, Lucina does outshine Marth in pretty much everything. Sales figures, base stats and growths, even the threads. I, I mean, just look at this early Marth design. Could you imagine if they went with that in Melee? The day is mine! To top it all off, unlike in Smash 4, Lucina and Marth aren't seen as exciting, fast characters. The whole cast ate a load of speed carrots, and the game itself used a speed wing. Everything moved faster, except Marth and Lucina. Other sorties, particularly Krom and Roy, became the hype tech chase speed demon characters. Marth and Lucina are more about winning neutral over and over with disjoints and modest strings. They are consistent characters to their core, and Lucina is, by design, better at being consistent. Lucina's bread-and-butter nature would make her hugely popular in the early meta alongside characters like Wolf. MKLeo and a number of other players would pick her usually as a co-main or secondary. Her straightforward kit made her a great character to learn a new game with. She picked up some pretty big early moments, like Grand Finals at Genesis 6. However, as the game wore on, a lot of players lost interest in her. In a game full of flashy new mechanics, Lucina's kit is downright generic. Her most interesting and exciting facet was her edgeguarding, and in Ultimate, edgeguarding isn't worth giving up the ledge in certain matchups. As the meta progressed, a lot of top players mostly shelved the Lucina, including MKLeo. Sometimes we'll see Lucina come out either to cover a matchup or to switch things up in a set, but she's not as common as she once was. In terms of actual gameplay, Lucina fits that classic sortie mold really well. She has a wonderful advantage state that's improved by Ultimate's nerfs to dodges, rolls, and recoveries. She has great out-of-shield tools and recovery options, as well as good enough base stats and frame data to excel in neutral against most of the cast. The classic mediocre disadvantage is all the more present in Ultimate, but she's overall a really good character, just not a very stylish one. Well, unless you're in Japan. In Ultimate, the best Lucina players are in Japan, namely Proto Banham and Itsuji, but also Mao and Musashi. Proto Banham is probably the world's most successful Lucina main. He got fifth at Evo and became famous for his edgeguards. He's pushed Lucina's punish game very far, showing that Lucina may have one of the best advantage states in the game if the player is quick enough. And Proto Banham is fast. Proto Banham is also good at using a lot of minor parts of Lucina's kits to his favor. His down smashes are particularly unique and effective, much like Mikaneko in Brawl. Like in Brawl, Lucina's down smash has good range and is insanely fast at frame 6. It can also lead to great feints, as players expect the forward smash. Other regions aren't too far behind, as the US has Mystery and Laid, and Europe has Leon. But Japan's Lucina seem a step ahead right now. And then there's Marth. In Ultimate, Marth is mostly the character the top players or Lucina mains break out when they're bored and have a game or entire tournament to spare. MKLeo has destroyed some pretty good players with Marth, demonstrating that Marth is still at least good in Ultimate. But even the sortie champion himself is down on Marth. After the recent 8.0 Invitational, he went so far as to say Lucina would have won where Marth had lost. Marth's best dedicated main is probably Rizasu, a multi-character master from Japan, and Rizasu's also switched off Marth to win sets. So what's hurting Marth? Two things. 
First, a lack of micro movement options. There is no wave dash, no dacus, no perfect pivoting, just dashing, walking, and jumping. For Marth, that's particularly bad, as he relies on precise movement to adjust his position so he can hit a tipper. Nerfing micro movement nerfs Marth. Second, Marf's tipper hitboxes aren't that consistent or good, and his tippers aren't that strong aside from his smash attacks. These mechanical details matter a lot, and you can see just how much they matter if you compare Falcon's knee in melee to Falcon's knee in ultimate. Good Marth players like Rizasu will find ways to use the sour spot to connect to the sweet spot, but most players will recognize that Lucina is simply more consistent making her not only less of a headache to learn, but better when mastered. It's kinda common to hear Marth held up as this secret, hidden late-game character waiting to be optimized like Ices or Shulk. The problem is, the tipper hitbox needs to be decent, and the movement needs to let him land those tippers. Otherwise, optimizing movement and combos won't fix his issues. It's a real shame, as Marf's tippers have made him a unique and interesting character each game. He's earned himself big wins and a big player base each title, and it'd be kinda disappointing to see such a Smash staple fall by the wayside. The bright side is, Marth could get there with buffs. He's already gotten some, and if Smash 4 is an indicator, that'll mean he'll get more. But until then, or until some Marth main proves us wrong, his Smash Ultimate story will be just like his Fire Emblem story, getting outplaced and outdone by a young imposter. What do you think? Will Marth make a comeback in Ultimate? Let us know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for more educational Smash content.